Be exactly what you want to be without all of the fear around you. We have to stand up together. All right, cool. So, so here, here's the idea. You know, the idea for me, um, you know, anybody listening to this on replay, uh, you know, we're now on Spotify, iHeartRadio. Uh, the Chairman Project with Jason Cisneros is live worldwide on all of the platforms. We've got three, the last three podcasts um, in the box. Um, and um, what I may do, because I'm meeting with um, a major corporation, a major company next week on Saturday, depending on the timing, I may actually move this podcast to Friday, but uh, just pay attention to, uh, to, to here. And then, you know, if you're following me on Instagram or, um, or Facebook uh, or here on X, I will announce if we're just going to do a podcast, we may do it Thursday, we may do it Friday, uh, or we may do it regular time on Saturday. It just depends on when we're going to get started with, um, with the organization. I'm going to be down there helping. Um, but uh, we've got the three podcasts that are up on YouTube. Uh, those of you that signed up at built2exit.biz, um, you should have received your first uh, set of show notes, and you'll probably get the second one today. My team's been working feverishly to make sure that that format was set up and, and to make sure you get my show notes week to week um, so you can refer back to them, add them to the notes that you're taking during the podcast. And um, and really ha- help your business along the way, but I got to I got to thinking this week about the the idea of attention, and um, you know and, and when we think about attention, you really don't have a business unless you're getting attention uh, from the marketplace, and uh, you know we talk heavily about the idea of people, you know, to set the premise to set the platform for uh, what we're going to be talking about this week. There's some things that I believe and have come to believe over the years of being in business that 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 are truths, right? They're principles, which was you know what we used to call this on a, on another platform. It was business principles, and that's what we talk about. And so if you if you dig into the principles of of um, of business and you start to think about where attention comes from. And what kind of attention should you be seeking? You've got to you've got to agree on a few basic premises, right? You're either building a business, okay? And I want to I want to heavily emphasize this because we're going to talk really deeply about it next week. Um, but you have to be committed to building assets, okay? Building assets. If you're not committed to building assets, you are imitating a business. Okay. Just like if somebody was to come in, they have the the doctor's coat and they have the scalpel and they have the little light over their head and they've got their mask and they walk in authoritatively and they got their chests all bowed out and they're saying scalpel, you know, and they're saying, you know, they're, they're talking really authoritative about it. And then you go, well, wait, before, before you open my chest, how many times have you done this? Um, well, Never. I read a book, you know, and that's the opinions that you're getting from a lot of people out there, especially in the marketing world, especially in the marketing world. These people, they're like, well, you got to do this and you got to do that and, and, uh, to get attention and you got to do all these things. And, and at the end of the day, how are they're doing a good job of marketing to people, telling them that marketing is the answer to the, to the challenges that you have with your business. Now, if, and, and if you are a builder, marketing is an asset that you build, okay? What is an asset? Let's, let's go into the definition because I want everybody to start understanding what I mean when I'm talking about an asset. It's a system and, a, and processes with technology and people um, it's process, procedure, technology, people built into a machine-like precision that operates without the presence or input of the owner. Okay, that's an asset. So if your marketing is an asset, 
it won't need your input because it'll have the right people, it'll have the right technology, it'll have the right systems, it'll have the right processes, and it'll be written down and it'll be something that predictably pr uh, produces the right amount of leads with the right amount of people so that it shifts into your next asset, which is your sales asset. And it goes through that process predictably like a machine. Okay, we gotta set that premise first. If you are not building a machine, you are imitating a business. Yeah, you can, there's some great imitator businesses that are out there. But again, the next premise is that 95% of fucking companies fail, okay? So whenever I hear the newest guru or the newest book or the newest that or the newest that, I've been at this shit for years. I've been at this game for years. And I still know that no matter who the guru is, no matter who the, what the new system is, what the flashiest thing, and oh, oh the, the jets and the cars and the blah, 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 blah. And I know that 95% of those assholes are going to be out of business. I know that they are fluffing up what they've got because 95% of people fail in business within a 10 year time frame. 50% don't make it one year. So when people come at me with all this new shit, it's like a farmer, right? You know, and, and I've done some work in, in, in the farming community and, you know, we're, we're heavy into the cannabis space and you, you know, the, these farmers, they know how to put stuff in the ground and they know how to, to yield a crop. And they, and, and you try talking a farmer into something new and improved 99% of the time, they're going to go, you're full of shit. My family's been doing this for three generations, five generations, you know, and, and if I start going down some track of, oh, the, the newest guru who's never planted shit in the ground, who's never grown a stock of corn, who's never done anything, and they're going to tell me how to farm? I don't think so, right? And that's how I feel when we're having these business conversations. 95% of people fail at business. They go out of business, which is tragic. It's painful. There's a lot of things. Trust me, I know I've been there. I've actually gone out of business <laughs> two or three times, and I know the pain of going out of business, which is why we have these conversations to help you avoid that or to help you speed through it if you happen to do it. Because I know if you're an entrepreneur, even if you fail, you're going to come back and do it again. Okay. And so all of the stuff that we, that we hear about getting attention right now, we have to filter through the intellect and the intelligence of asking the question, who's telling me this stuff? Okay. Yes, they may be making a hundred million dollars because they're telling me that I need to go stand in front of a plane or I need to go stand in front of the right car because, you know, uh, people need to see my shit, blah, 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 blah. And, and I, and I, I think the idea is, is great. Like, you know, you, you, the concept behind it is that people want to be inspired. They want to be lifted up. There's a good side to doing lifestyle um, type marketing, but when it, trips over into deception it's just like the the um you know the the medical professional the heart surgeon that comes in in a coat he's never been through school but he comes in with a coat and he's got a scalpel and he's got all this other shit and he's going to open up a chest for his first time and that chest is going to be yours so when we talk about attention and we talk about marketing yes it's crucial Yes, it's a hundred percent. Yes, and they change, and yes, they evolve, and yes, they the the, um, the 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 tactics change. And you know, if you were trying to to uh, advertise in newspapers right now because it worked for me at one point, you'd be woefully behind, you know, behind. And so, but I want to apply the same conversation because I do know that social media marketing works. I do know lifestyle marketing works. I do know that relationship marketing works. I do know all of those things, but how do you measure and is it attached to a strategy and a, and a system, right? Again, my, my nickname is, is the architect when it comes to, to building businesses. Why? Because an architect is the one most crucial, but if you don't have an architect and you're building a home, you are going to be in trouble. Okay. You're not, you're, it's like going to, to somebody that's building your home and you go, well, you're an electrician. You've done a lot of homes, all that kind of, so why don't you just build my house? Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm an electrician. I'm not a, I'm not an architect. Oh, so you're part of it, right? This is marketing. 
marketing people all of a sudden at some point in time magically believe that they know how to do business, that they know how to build business. When they are an electrician or a painter or somebody that, that's putting in the tile, marketing people are not business geniuses. And you can tell by the amount of time or the, the amount of churn of the people who are at the top of that list, the amount of churn, right? And, and are they helping people actually make more sales or are they lining their own pocket with your sales because they have fooled you into thinking that marketing is the only thing that can go along with your business, that the one thing you should focus on and, and this new strategy and this new tactic, okay, how many people do you have working for you? How long have you been in business? Then, then maybe I'll listen to you. I don't give a shit what you drive. I don't give a shit how many uh, airplanes that you can get on. I don't give a shit where, where you live because you know what? All of that shit is rented, okay? Let me say that again. I don't give a shit what these marketing gurus are saying, the planes that they're on. They, the, yeah, Kodak, for crying out loud, just go back in history and business and look at Kodak. Kodak was... It was great. It was great. It was great. It could never go out of business it could, until it did. And you can't look at the amount of people that are in that marketing space, how quickly they go through, how much their message changes, how much they sound like each other, how much bullshit they're saying versus people that have actually achieved stuff, right? I have a really good friend of mine by the name of Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan is OG marketing. We're talking about real world uh, um, results. We're talking about he turned around CBS. He he turned around the uh, the Emmys. He did you know he took a he got tired of working in Hollywood and he went into um, into consumables and he helped a company that sold green beans go from uh, uh, you know a few million five ten million dollars a year to almost a billion dollar organization. And his principles of marketing haven't changed. I brought him into an organization uh, with me. I partnered up with him and I got to sit with him every single day for two years and to listen to his concepts around marketing, to listen to how he, he, got, he got into the detail of, of a cloud that is in the background that's shaped like a heart if you're trying to attract um, you know, the, the female uh, um, uh, the female dollar. If they're trying to attract the male dollar, there's other shapes that go. Like the man was a master. He was an actual heart surgeon. He was an actual architect of what worked in branding and marketing. Okay. And, and he did it over. He's still doing it by the way, still doing it, but he, you don't hear of him. He's not on Instagram on his rented jet and he's not driving, you know, a rented car. He's not driving all of these different things. What he, he has all that stuff, but you don't see it. Right. And you don't see that. I don't, I don't put forth that stuff when I'm marketing either because it attracts the wrong kind of attention. You know, there was a guy and, and Tony or Sid or Danny, maybe you guys can help me, um, help me with the guy's name. I forget it every once in a while, but Belzerian. So Dan Belzerian was one of these guys. He's on the jets and he's on the boats and he's, you know, and everybody's like, oh, and, and the, the male contingency was like, oh, I got to be like him and all these girls everywhere and these jets and these boats and all this other kind of stuff. Well, guess where he is now? I saw a podcast from this guy that, by the way, massive respect to him, by the way, massive respect, because of what happens is a lot of these guys fade off into, into obscurity because their shit didn't work, because they were lying because they were, they were trying to put forth a, fa a facade to reach unethically into the pocket of the people who were trusting them to be able to help them s to help their own lives. And he came back, he just did a podcast recently and he said, you know what? I was trying to fill an empty hole, right? I'm a Christian. I believe in, I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Bible. I believe that there, there is a, a, a right and a wrong in this life. And, and he got to the end of that, which we all do. I went through it myself. I had the boats and everybody coming over for big parties. And I had the, the house and all this other kind of stuff. All rented, by the way, in, in my first phase. All rented. All trying to impress everybody else. It attracted the wrong people because when I crashed, there was nobody there for me when I got to the bottom. That's how I knew that I had attracted the wrong attention. 
Because when I did fail, the people that I hung around that were there because of what they thought I had, and I did have it for a period of time, it looks successful. It's a snapshot. Most people's Instagram right now is a snapshot of horse shit, right? Most people's uh, um, social media is a snapshot of horse shit. You want to talk about living in a new industry, right? We There's two really exciting things that I want to, that, that, that have come about. One, the entire world, the entire world at the same time has stopped giving a shit. They've stopped caring. You tell, I mean, I could go through here and, and talk to everybody that's on this platform right now and I could have a conversation with you about your customer service interactions, the things that you've bought, the things that you've, that you've, you've uh, invested in, and I could ha have a conversation with all of you and you're all going to have horror stories of going, well, I gave them the money and then they disappeared. Oh, I bought the thing and it didn't work, right? The whole world. This is exciting for everybody that's on here. Ramon, man, good to see your face, my man. David, God, I got a bunch of people in here that I absolutely love and adore today. Lisa, hi. Um, so, but if you think about that for just a second, why is that exciting? Because if you follow the Chairman Project podcast and you implement the things that we talk about, there's a lot of people in here that are either students or and or graduates of the growth course. If you're in here and you are and you are actually building, you can get excited about this. Because we live in a day and age, and I'm going to say this twice, we live in a day and age where customer service is a new idea. We live in a day and age where customer service is a new idea. What does that mean? Principles of business, just like principles of being a good human being, biblical principles never change. They're unchanging. They're called a principle for a reason. It's because it's a rock you can set and build your house on. It is rock solid principles. And when we talk about customer service as an asset, and I'll say that for those of you that joined a little bit late, I'll re reiterate what an asset is. It's processes, procedures, technology, and people that have been built in such a way that the owner is not necessary in the process. It's built with precision. Right, we talk a lot about uh, um, the the Grandmaster Chime, the Patek Philippe Grandmaster Chime um, watch, and it was built a hundred thousand hours, seven years to build. They only made seven of them. Six of them sold for thirty-one million dollars before the watch was ever completed. That's because the Grandmaster, uh, um, the the Patek Philippe Grandmaster Chime, was architected for a specific outcome. And inside of it was each asset touched each other and moved the next one with precision and forethought and a dedication to the art of building something real. And so when we talk about our businesses, we're out there and we've, we've all fallen under this hypnosis that marketing has to be this and it has to be that. And you have to lie and fake it till you make it and put yourself in front of a jet. And then all of a sudden, everybody's going to love you and they're going to buy from you. Bullshit. People and momentum and, and business is only earned and gained momentum in a trajectory, upward trajectory, when you have built assets. Okay. We talk about this a lot. There is about 40 for a completed uh, the equivalent of a Patek Philippe Grandmaster Chime, there's about 40 assets that have to be present in your business if you want to sell and or exit at top maximum cash flow. Okay? Your end game. Your end game. If your end game doesn't have numbers attached to it, if it doesn't have the outcome, if it doesn't have freedom, if it doesn't have what you're going to do next, then you're not, you are imitating a business. You know, I love you all so much and I love the attempt. I have to tell you the truth and sometimes it's hard to hear, but there are builders of business that end up being part of the 5% that, that last beyond the 10 years, that build something that they can exit, that build something of value that doesn't need them to be present every minute of every day. And then there are imitators. I have been an imitator in the past. I have been. And I think you have to imitate until you've actually decided in your mind, I am going to be a builder. 
And that means everything, every piece of output in your, in your company needs to be automated and be predictable. Hi, my name is Jason Cisneros, founder and chairman of Anton J Global, a world-class business consulting company that has helped hundreds of clients and thousands of growth course students fix, scale, and successfully master their businesses. To put it simply, my team and I help people turn their businesses into machines that create cash. To better support startups and other mid-sized companies, my team and I developed a phenomenal and comprehensive digital growth course, where I poured decades of business ownership and know-how into 20 hours of content. This course is not easy. It's not an easy pill but demands real work from you to implement the blueprints that I've developed. We know that reaching financial freedom is never easy, but totally worth it. Go to growthcourse.com right now to learn more about the course and get started on your business journey today. You've got to understand, you've got to become an architect. You've got to be an implementer of how to build systems that operate without you. And, if, and while you are operating in the business, it has to produce predictable results. If you have a marketing campaign, how many leads are you getting from your target audience? When you get those leads, how many predictably are transferring into being uh, a, a customer? When you get that customer, how many of those are transferring into being raving fan uh, um, clients? What is a raving fan client? They'll use you again. They'll speak positively about you in public and they will give you a damn referral. This, this isn't hard, but this has to be the machinery, right? Like I said, 40 to have a, an optimized business. There's 18 that are crucial to optimize your cash flow. And there's four crucial ones that we talk about every single week. You've got to have your sales uh, systems in place. You have to have your operation systems in place. You have to have your finance systems in place and you have to have your culture absolutely anchored out in, in, uh, in, with your systems. Okay, those are four. And I can tell you that probably five to 10% of the entire world is even working on those. Some, of, uh, some people look like they have a business because they've got some repetitive stuff, but it doesn't stand up to the test of time. The first wave that comes in, a lot of people have some damn nice sandcastles that they built out in the at right next to the ocean some really great sandcastles it's cranking in money right now jason it's taking care of me jason it's been it's i've been doing this for three years i've been doing this for five years great when the wave the first wave of a down economy or a 9-11 or something that comes along does it and will it stand that wave of contention yes or no okay and so the, the main concept, I want to bring it back here to the idea that you just have to commit to being a builder, right? Yes, we have the growthcourse.com. We have, uh, you know, Anton J that helps uh, my company that, that is consulting with big businesses, all that kind of stuff. But, you, but again, those things cost money for shortcutting your process to being able to build assets. We know how to build assets with our eyes closed, okay? But ultimately, if you went and sat down in your local neighborhood with somebody who's owned a business for beyond 10 years and just ask them questions. They will give you gold. They will give you gold for a cup of coffee or a lunch and they'll be able to build. And you are asking the question from the perspective, you're asking the question from the perspective of how did they build an asset? Some company owners don't know that they've built assets, but you go in and you say, how do you, how do you consistently get customers? Right. You ask them, how do you consistently uh, uh, create raving fan clients? How is it that how do you follow up? What are you what's your referral process? What's your pri pricing methodology? Right. How do you treat your employees? How long have your employees been with you? Big indicator, by the way, is to look at the churn of, of a company to see how many how long have people been with that organization? Right. And how do they speak of the business? Right. You ask these, these are crucial questions, not how can I go out and rent a Maserati or stand in front of a jet or do whatever, you know, to get false attention because you're going to get false customers. You're going to get false attention, which means that your marketing strategies are going to be wasted time, which is the most expensive thing and wasted money. Because as soon as somebody, it's like, it's like dating apps. Right. You look, you look at, I did dating apps for like 13 seconds back in the day. 
And every single time I showed up to one of those dates, the lady that was the, her picture, she never looked like her picture. It's false advertising. And when you get to know people, when get to people get to know me, they know what I have, right? They, they can see that. And beyond that, who cares what Jason Cisneros has? You can go to my LinkedIn and you can read the recommendations of real people who have changed their lives because nobody gives a shit about Jason Cisneros. What they care about is, can I help them? Can something that I learned and taught to them, can it help them in their life? And, and this is real marketing. That's real attention. We've been in business, uh, my consulting company has been in business for 15 years at this point in time, and you can't find a negative review about us. Name another consulting company that can say that. We have no refunds on the growth course, zero. Why? Because I build solid projects. I, 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 produ I produce a predictably consistent product. And, they, and the, the business owners either do it <laughs> or they make excuses to stay broke. Can you say the same thing for your product or service, right? Excellence is at such a premium today. People that can do the things that they say they can do, produce the outcomes that they say they can produce and follow through and are truthful and are, can count on them. There, that, that is such a premium right now that if you are that person, if you are building that business, if are you, you are building assets because you've fallen in love first with the outcome of your client or your, or, or your, uh, um, your customer, you are a rare diamond. Yes, I don't have the, the millions of followers on, on social media, but I'm looking at the pictures of all of the people that are in this room right now. You all are aspiring to be builders, right? And you all are, are I, if I can arm you with a piece of information that you didn't have prior to this conversation, and you, I know it's in your heart. I'm again, I'm just looking at all the faces. I'm, I, can, I, I know that in your heart, you have fallen in love with the outcome of your cl client or your customer, and you're constantly seeking new information to be able to improve your processes, your procedures, your outcomes, so that you can be free by freeing other people. We live in a day and age, I wanna make this crystal clear. We live in a day and age where we got called non-essential. Each and every one of you. You should be so offended by that, but we get, we get, diet, we get so inundated, and this is part of the, the process of stealing our freedom, of stealing our independent access to capital, of stealing our, our, our capacity for growth. Those type of things, it's stolen by overwhelming you with shit that you feel like you should be able to do something about, but you can't, right? At the end of the day, that is the solid strength that I, the one thing that I am so grateful to God that I was able to do was to be able to fight back against nonsense, to fight bullies, to rescue kids, to be able to help the starving with feed a billion, to be able to do the work that we do in, in domestic violence, to be able to help, to be able to go places, to be able to put on the vest and, and go into dark places and not have to worry about my financial position. And I know that whether you can articulate it or not, that is your desire as well. Your desire is to be able to have that freedom, to be able to take your game to the next level so that you can do more good in this life. And I don't want millions of posers. I don't want millions of imitators. Give me a thousand people that are committed to standing up to people who would call us non-essential. You want to call us non-essential? SMEs. That's the designation that we live under, right? That's small and medium-sized enterprises. That's zero employees to 499 employees. You're my family. You're my people. You're the ones that I want to go to war with, okay? And what, what happened when we got called non-essential? Who stood up for us? Nobody. The thing that we are building together here, whether you realize it or not, is an organization called UBA. It's Unstoppable Business Alliance. And all that means is that we are all going to band together around good information. I want to do business with you. You're doing business with me. We do business with each other and stop funding unethical, massive corporations like Pfizer and Amazon 
and people that the ones that will would love to just eliminate all of us and make us total consumers. Not investors, not being able to do and provide for ourselves. That's what they want. And they're coordinating with a centralized government who doesn't has our, have our best interests. They've lost their way. The business community, all of us, have to behave, whether, again, whether you're Christian or not, we have to behave in, under biblical principles for to have a successful business. We have to tell the truth. We have to fall in love with somebody else, else, else's outcome, which, create, which is necessity. You have to have humility. You have to look yourself in the mirror and say, I am my biggest hindrance, rather than blaming somebody else, blaming a system, or checking the boxes of being a fake victim. Right? And there's lots of fake victims. If you've had your, the only way that I def define a victim is you've had your freedom taken away from you against your will. Okay? And that is children that are being trafficked in the sex trade. That is a lot of women that are in abusive homes. That is, that are, that's kids that can't feed themselves. Those are choices that, that they didn't make. Right? They didn't make. And somebody took that away from them. If we don't fight for them, we don't deserve the freedom that we have. But no, what we do as a society is we reward, hey, I, I'm not failing because of this, and that person's upset with me, and that, that, this, this thing, and blah, 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 rather than saying, stop it. Stop it and view yourself. If you're on this phone and you have a roof over your head and you've got a food in your belly, you are part of the two, three percent of the most wealthy, the most blessed, the most privileged on this planet, what are you doing with it? What are we collectively doing with it to be able to help the actual vulnerable? I don't know about you, but I'm sick and freaking tired of hearing about how everything is set up again. You know what? The world is set up not to be easy. The world is set up for you to be able to, to dive in and, and and make yourself the best version of you that you possibly can to go in and, and strengthen your own weaknesses and to add to your strengths. To do what? To be in service of other people. In that process is the only place that you will choose that you will experience genuine joy. When you are serving other people because you've overcome your own weaknesses. Because we all had to be able to come overcome our own weaknesses, we had to have guides. We had to have mentors. We had to have people, and I call them angels, that drop into my life at exactly the right time to be able to give me the right exact answer that maybe wasn't easy, that wasn't the, the thing that I thought and when I was feeling sorry for myself. And I was saying, my daddy, she went to prison for killing me, beat me up all that. You know what? That shit made me stronger. And it took strong people to look me in my eyes, love me deep enough to say, Jason, stop acting like a pussy and get to work. Overcome those weaknesses. Take your game to the next level. Serve other people. It took the right people who loved me enough to tell me the truth. And I know each and every one of you can, can bring to mind right now a coach that maybe you hated in the moment. Somebody that said the thing that you needed to hear to move you to your next level. Because inherently, inherently, everybody listening to the sound of my voice, your soul craves freedom. Your soul craves freedom. And so if you crave freedom, how are you attaining it? And how can you help other people attain it? Business is a mechanism. It's a mechanism for you to put together three things. Your business does three things and it should do it in a machine-like way. One, you help people make money. Two, you help people save money. Three, you measurably improve the quality of their life. Those are the only three things a business is set up to do. And if you can do that and, the, and fine tune how you're doing it and get better results for people, you don't have to lie through marketing. You don't have to bullshit people because your product and service is speaking for you. Now you take those results and you throw some marketing on top of it that is telling the truth to the people who actually need you. Now you've got something. You've got traction. You've got something that will, that will live beyond the bullshit. And so 
as we talk about this idea of attention, this whole entire podcast was supposed to be about the idea of attention, right? And good attention would be like Apple's iPhone launch, right? Tesla's Cybertruck unveiling. Bad attention would be the United Airlines passenger removal uh, accident, right? Bad attention would be BP's Deepwater uh, Horizon oil spill, right? Those are, those are the things that we talk that in real life. And you hear a lot of people say, all attention is good attention. Ah, horseshit. I don't, I don't, I want, I want to build a life. I want, you know, you, those of you that know me and follow me for a long time, there's one thing that you'll know about me is that I am consistently belligerent. Okay. I'm consistently belligerent in the face of fakes, in the face of, 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 uh, you know, people that, that want to take advantage of kids. I am consistently belligerent. And I don't want, I'm, I, I fight against this idea because we are, as a society, like I said, we got called non-essential. How do you frame 60% of the GDP? That's trillions of dollars. That's m way more trillions of dollars than an Apple, which is $1 trillion. Yes, they're a big company. But how do we do 60% of the GDP, 60% of the hiring, which, by the way, is the fundamental pillar of freedom, Yes, freedom of speech. Yes, your Second Amendment. Yes, all that kind of stuff. But the fundamental pillar that nobody talks about, nobody tells you about because they don't want you to know, is that the fundamental pillar of your freedom individually is economic in nature. It's economic in nature, and you've got to be fighting for that every breath. That's why you're here, why you're spending this time with me on a Saturday when there's a million other things that you could be doing. And the quality of the human beings that are listening to me right now, I would, uh, you can't pay. You can't pay enough money to have the attention of the people that are in this room right now. High quality. I know you. I watch you. I see the things that you're doing in this world. You are high quality individuals. High quality doing and falling in love with the outcome of your, of your clients. Falling in love with the outcome of your employees constantly challenging the person in the mirror. You can't pay for this kind of attention from the people that I love. You're the people I want to be with. This is the community that I want to be with because when the shit hits the fan and I, and I look out there in the world and I see a Ramon, I can count on Ramon. Right? I can count on Julian Bryce. I can count on Lisa. I can count on Tony. I can count on Danny T. I could count on El Patrick. I could count on the P David. I could pa I could count on every one of the people that are in this room to be doing the best they can with what they have, and not to be leaning on some weak ass strategy of fake attention. So as we band together, those are the kind of things, right? Att attracting the the wrong kind of attention, right? Let's talk about. I'm going to give you six actual takeaways. The wrong kind of attention is engaging in, in contra controversial behavior, right? Let's go back. I was just talking about Dan Bilzerian. Controversial, controversial behavior. Did it draw attention to him? Absolutely. It did. It drew attention to him, right? But what did he end up along with the way? You know, women making charges, um, his partners, the money that he was using was being misallocated. Was it his money? No, it was investor money. All that kind of stuff to a place where it crashed and burned over and over and over. But again, to his credit, I don't want anybody to think that I'm trashing on Dan because I believe that we all as human beings have to go through our own journey. And the last podcast I saw that, man, was complete and total humility. And that's his and God's journey, not mine for me to judge him. That's him and his and God's. We all have that. We all have that personal journey that we have to go on. And I will never, ever, ever try to inject my flawed opinion on somebody else's journey. All I can do is pray for them. All I can do is hope the best for them. All I can do in, in times of conflict with another human being is start out expecting the best of them. That's not, that's not for me. That's between them and God. Okay, but did he engage in, in controversial behavior? Yeah. Did it work? Yeah, it did. Right? Was it the right kind of attention? I'll let you be the judge. I don't think so. Ignoring customer feedback. Again, if you don't have an asset, if you don't have a machine in place that's going to actually measure 
how what you assumed was going to, uh, um, you're falling in love with the client's outcome. You assume that, you put it out in the marketplace. You don't listen to feedback from your clients. That, that's gonna be the wrong kind of feedback. Are you a business owner that's looking to build your company into a machine that creates cash? I'm Jason Cisneros, chairman and founder of Anton J Global, a world-class business consulting company that has turned around, merged, or prepped for sale hundreds of companies just like yours. I'm best known as the architect when it comes to fixing and building companies across the globe. My experience comes from owning and exiting over 20 of my own companies successfully. It's that real world experience that I've converted into the ultimate blueprint that has saved and grown my clients' businesses. If you're tired of getting bad advice, have bought all the books, all the coaching programs, and still aren't seeing the success that you were promised, it might be time to work with a team that has actual experience and a track record of success. Please scan the QR code or visit AntonJ.com to schedule your free 15 minute consultation to see if we can help you reach your outcomes. That's AntonJ.com, A-N-T-O-N-J-A-E.com. Poor quality products and services. So many people working on looking good, they don't make sure that their shit is actually good. You can't measure it. Like I said, I love LinkedIn recommendations because those are real people. You can't fake that. You can't fake those people. You, can't, you can go in, see who they are, call them up, text them, email them, do whatever it is and say, hey, why did you say that cool thing about, about Christopher? Why did you say that cool thing about Lisa? Is that real? You can't fake LinkedIn recommendations. Spend time getting that and, you, and people that are real business owners from your target audience are gonna go there. People that sign the front of the checks are on, Insta, are on LinkedIn. People that sign the back of the checks are on, on Instagram, okay? Uh, being unprofessional, okay? Overhyping or misrepresenting your offer, which is the market is rampant with that. It's rampant with that. Don't lie about what you do. Just keep getting good results. Keep getting good results and better results, and then those people will happily talk about you. Okay? Lack of transparency, lie, lying, okay? Attracting the right kind of attention. Provide exceptional value, build a strong brand, engage your audience, demonstrate expertise, deliver excellent customer service, and give back to your community. That's the right attention. Every one of those that I just mentioned should be a built asset. Again, what's an asset? An asset is a, a system, a process, a technology, and people that are built into a machine-like way that, pr that produces a predictable result without the input of the, of the uh, owner. Okay? We teach that, right? And you've got to be working at least on the core four. The core four are your sales. What sales assets do you have? Operations, which is delivery on the promise that sales made, by the way. What assets do you have in operations? What assets do you have in finance to be able to translate? And that's all finance does. It translates the language of business into did your uh, assumptions work? If they did, let's do more of that. If they didn't, let's do less of that. If you don't have your financial assets in place, if you don't have a 13-week rolling cash flow, right? I'm going to say this right out loud. If you don't have a 13-week rolling cash flow, you are imitating a business. You're imitating. Okay? And then your culture, which is actually number one. I say it's number four, but it's actually number one. If you don't have a culture that is consistently treating your employees, each other, and your clients and your customers and the vendors and your community in a consistent, disciplined way, then you don't have a culture. It'll flow with the wind. It'll flow with the most influential person, your next hire. Right, you're only as good as your next hire. Okay, so those are the those are the good and bads. Um, and then I was I was reading in in Forbes, um, and, and the uh, article because I always like to make sure I give proper um, attribution. It was called "Authenticity in Marketing: Why Brands Must Lead with Why" by Amy Meister. Now, I, I love some of the things that they say. Okay, when somebody's a journalist, I wonder to myself, have they ever owned a business? And so they go out in the marketplace, they gather data, um, they don't have a business of their own, and then they put down their findings, which I love. I love that. 
but some of their conclusions can be so off the mark because they've never owned a business. They, how do I read Forbes and then apply something that I've read in Forbes? Well, I have to be a builder. I have to be a seeker, which all of you are. I have to be somebody that is seeking the truth and building assets and testing my, my results and, and constantly trying to get better. Okay. So here's, here, let me read some of the article and then we'll, we'll move into the question and, and, uh, and conversation portion of the show. In today's market, authenticity can be the make or break factor in a brand's success. In fact, not only do 90% of customers report that authenticity, 90% y'all should be something we're paying attention to. Authenticity is an important factor in deciding which brands they like. Okay. I watched a, a show with, um, um, with Roseanne Barr and she was coaching other, uh, uh comedians. And the consistent thing that she kept telling comedians to do was stop imitating other comedians, to tell their own stories, to be authentic, in other words. From one of the greatest comedians, one of the greatest resulting comedians on the face of the planet, to get that coaching to every single comedian that walked across and did their set. And I thought, man, that is so us, right? That is so us. Stop imitating another business and build yours. Stop imitating. Build it with your personality, with your core beliefs. Because if you have them, and this was her point about comedy, which I have found to be true, is that if you speak the truth about your own experience that only you can have, there's millions of other people that can attach to it because it's authentic. You're not faking. You're not imitating. You are being genuinely who you are. And that means talking about the bad stuff and the good stuff. Okay, so uh, let's see, go on in the article. Deciding the brands they like, but millennials and Gen Z, almost 140 million people now prefer brands that are real and organic. Let me just translate that for you for just a second. Real and organic means that you yourself are injecting your reality, your truth, the things that are true about you, your experiences in life, and you're turning them in to assets inside of your business that can consistently relay that message to people who need what you offer and are really looking for it, okay? Uh, to help businesses build an authentic brand, uh, breaks down three main questions, okay? Why do they do it? We go through that, um, which is mostly contrived in most fake businesses, putting why at the center, uh, crafting a why statement, so there's a lot of stuff in this article that's worthy of your read, okay? But let me get to the final thoughts and I'll tell you what I don't think is worthy about the article. Brands must intentionally establish strategies and processes rooted in their why. By clearly defining the why behind what they do and by questioning how various activities support the core identity, companies can authentically engage in business building, business branding, uh, building a brand consistently and supporting public marketing efforts. What that last sentence is saying that the author could never actually verbalize is that you need to build an, uh, a machine-like organization that creates predictable results into a cash machine. That's what your business should be. It should be a cash machine because that's the only way, that's the scoreboard, right? That's the scoreboard for your business. Is it creating free cash flow? Right? We talk about the three different kinds. There's profit, which is a myth. There's um, operating capital, which is, yes, you made it, but it's got to go back into the business to sustain the growth and the, and the longevity. And then there's free cash flow, the money you take off, your, off of the table to put in your pocket. None of that is going to be built consistently or with longevity or with the ability to be able to sell unless you have built assets to be able to continue to have continuity. None of it. There's three ways to exit a business and you and everybody else that owns a business is, is after these three things. Number one, there's three types of ways to exit your business. That's why my new book, you know, the website that you guys sign up for, for my show notes is built to built to exit dot biz, right? That's, that's the whole concept behind it. Everybody wants to exit their business, whether they can articulate it or not. And there's three types. There's the people that love what they do and they want to do it forever but you go from obligated to optional. 
I love being here, but I don't have to be here. That's one kind of exit. The next one is total time control. You can go build another business. You can go build a charity. You can sail around the, the, the planet with your wife or your husband, right? Or your significant other. The third way is to actually exit and sell your business. And by the way, there's so much advertising going on there. The way to build businesses and then exit. There's only 7% of businesses that ever get put on the market that ever sell. So unless you know how to build assets, which is building a company, selling your company is a pipe dream for most people. But to flip that on its head and say 95% of companies fail, owning a business is a little bit of a pipe dream. <laughs> it really is. But if you build assets and you build it the correct way, that's what this community is all about. And we're heading towards UBA, Unstoppable Business Alliance, where we can all stand up to never, ever be called non-essential again when we control and create, create 60% of the, of the GDP. That's a lot of trillions that you are personally involved in. You should have a voice in the way that this country is run. You should have a voice in the way that your community is run. You should have a voice in how we uh, um, face and deal with the rest of the world. But there's some people, unethical businesses and some unethical um, you know, politicians that think that they know better than you. We're going to all band together. We're going to fight that battle. That's a three to five year battle. But the battle that you have between this show and next show is for you to take some of this information, impl implement it in your business, figure out, stop imitating people, right? Ray Charles, one of, the, one of the greatest musicians to ever walk the face of the planet. Ray Charles, in the beginning of his career, could imitate every other great musician. He could imitate them. And the greatest piece of coaching that he got that I want to extend to you is Ray needs to find Ray's voice. Ray Charles needed to find Ray Charles' voice, and when he did, he changed the world. When you find your voice, when you authentically operate in the world, stop imitating other people, stop imitating other, other influencers, stop in, you know, imitating what they do, find the people that your product and their service desperately, find the people that desperately need you and your product or service. Because if there's one, there's two. If there's two, there's 500. If there's 500, there's 1,000. If there's 1,000, there's a million. If there's a million, there's 10 million. That's what you spend time on. Between this show and next show, that's what you got to do. Take something that you learned here, implement it in your business. It's a process improvement scenario. No wild swings up, no wild swings down. Process improvement over time. That will help you free yourself, exit yourself, and then help other people to become free. I love you all from the, from the depths of my heart. I think, and I hope you know, I put my heart, my soul, my study, my research, all the stuff that I put into these shows, I do it for you. I also do it for me because in selfishly, if you all aren't free, if you all aren't running a successful business, if we're not doing business with each other, we will lose. We will actually become slaves at worst. Uh, indentured servants at best to a system that none of us voted for. We have to stand with each other. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here, for investing. I know the most important thing, you can't get back the time that we just spent together. And it's my prayer before I ever start every one of these shows, it's my prayer that somebody or all of you will get something that improves your life. I've said it over and over and over again. If I don't do that, then I am pointless.